water is essential for life on Earth. When it rains, water can carry particles, including organic matter and microorganisms, through the soil, the unsaturated rocks, and finally into the water-filled zones, the aquifers. But what exactly happens on this path, and how does it influence our ecosystem? The interface between atmosphere and geosphere is called the critical zone. This is where most plants and animals thrive, including us humans. It has important functions, such as providing clean drinking water and carbon storage. Researchers at the Collaborative Research Center Aquadiva in Jena aim to gain a thorough understanding of processes in the critical zone. To achieve this, 80 researchers from four institutions and various disciplines are working closely together. The critical zone is increasingly impacted by human activities, including land use and climate change. Our management practices endanger the quality of our drinking water. Agriculture is the main source for the high concentration of nitrate in the groundwater. But what about other substances derived from the surface? What about antibiotics, viruses, microorganisms? Do they also travel into the subsurface? Will they survive there? In Aquadiva, we want to understand if the filter function of the subsurface is still sufficient to retain all these substances. In the Heinich National Park, one of the few ancient beech forests left in Europe, scientists have established an entirely unique infrastructure platform for research into subsurface biodiversity, the Heinich Critical Zone Exploratory. Here, they are investigating the flows of water and gases that connect the surface and the organisms living in it with the soil, the deeper rocks and the groundwater. A particularly important question for Aquadiva is how groundwater is influenced by environmental change. After all, natural groundwater reservoirs supply up to 25% of the world's population with clean drinking water. The scientists regularly take groundwater samples from different wells, down to depths of 90 meters. They want to know how land use and weather extremes, such as heavy rainfalls after long periods of drought, are affecting the quality of groundwater. Fresh groundwater samples can be analyzed immediately in the field laboratory built in the Heinich, without having to be sent to distant facilities. Researchers measure chemical components in the groundwater, but also tiny microorganisms, such as ultra-small bacteria, which have minimized their cell size in order to adapt to the habitat. Because of their small genomes, they are dependent on relationships with other organisms. To access the subsurface, rock cores are drilled as part of Aquadiva. These drill holes are further developed into groundwater wells, used to deploy sophisticated instruments and to extract groundwater samples. The water samples are analyzed for dissolved materials, suspended colloids and microorganisms. Also, the rock cores are examined for mineralogy and the inherent microorganisms, which has already led to novel findings. Although the Heinich subcatchment is a rather small hillslope catchment, we were able to identify up to five biogeochemical zones in the subsurface, which are distinct both in the hydrogeology or the hydrogeochemistry and the microbial abundance and diversity. This was rather surprising to the hydrogeologists but also to subsurface ecologists because such sites are usually considered as homogeneous and uniform. On site, the researchers characterized the layers of the freshly extracted drill cores according to their color, texture, structure and major mineralogy. Based on this data, they can reconstruct the geological formations as well as the structure and properties of the aquifers themselves. Using special probes, the researchers also carry out geophysical and hydrogeological investigations at depth. They want to know, for example, how rapid fluctuations in groundwater level or long periods of drought affect subsurface life. A 
Another area of interest to the Aquadiva researchers is the exchange of gases between the atmosphere, soil and groundwater. Plants, animals and microorganisms produce and consume various gases, in particular oxygen and carbon dioxide. With innovative Raman multi-gas sensors, they can trace depth profiles of these gases continuously on-site and are able to disentangle biotic and abiotic processes. One of the unique aspects of Aquadiva is that we are trying to connect microbial life in the subsurface with its environment. And the way we can do this is through measuring gases and isotope tracers. For example, here we measure radiocarbon and we are able to use that to determine the age of the source carbon that the microbes are eating. And we've been able to show by looking at compounds that are found in microbial cell walls that the fossil carbon is a substantial source of carbon and energy for microbial life in the subsurface. Computer scientists and computer linguists at Aquadiva are developing a data management platform for the vast amount of data collected during laboratory and field measurements. What makes it special is the semantic enhancement of the data, which is then much better integrated and searchable. It even includes information from external scientific publications. In addition, the data can be used for modeling hydrodynamics or biodiversity. Collaborative Research Centre Aquadiva's multidisciplinary team is working together to gain new understanding of the functioning and conservation of our sensitive groundwater and ecosystems.